Okay, so for today, what we're going to do is look at min.io. Um, we actually had a, a brief look at min.io in the last video that uh, I uploaded, uh, which was about uh, using Nextcloud and connecting it to external storage and applications. Uh, in there, uh, my example was um, how to set up a min.io, um, but I didn't really cover in detail like min.io in and of itself. I just connected the Nextcloud to min.io. Um, and it, it got requested that I do a video around min.io and I think it's, you know, maybe a good idea. So if you need, um, S3 compatible storage, object storage on like a local on-prem, uh, test environment, maybe you're doing uh, dev work, which you plan to then migrate to a cloud, um, uh, instance whereby it's, you know, uh, AWS, Azure, uh, GCP, whatever. Um, or if you just need to spin up something really quickly to share um, objects or to share uh, files over HTTP or HTTPS, um, it's a pretty quick and easy way to get started. So uh, as a blog, um, you really can do this with just one command. Um, now I did uh, go ahead and download uh, min.io so we can see by doing docker image list, you can see um, we have this min.io slash min.io. This is the latest version of min.io in the image. Um, and so now really the only thing I need to do to get this up and running is to run this command. So if you do uh, control shift V, um, control C from the previous blog and control shift V, uh, you'll get this. Now what this does is it puts um, min.io uh, into a container named min.io test. We open up uh, or we map these ports to the min.io instance, uh, and it needs two ports. One is for the APIs and one is for the console. Okay. Um, and then here, this last little bit, this is kind of new. Uh, they've, they've updated their console in the past uh, about six months or a year, I guess. Uh, but when I first started looking at min.io, uh, this was already just kind of open and you only needed port 9000. Um, because they've added APIs um, now, so there's uh, two ports that we open. And then we specify that the console address is going to be um, at the local host at, at this port. Uh, but before I do that, uh, we're going to delete this command. Okay. Uh, what I need to do on this particular machine is I just need to check that I actually uh, have that port open. So anywhere. Um, this may not be needed for the this example, but just for good practice, um, we can allow uh, port 9001. So this is uh, UFW is the firewall, the default firewall in Linux Mint, which is what I'm running here, Ubuntu. Uh, a lot of Ubuntu derivatives use UFW as the, the default. So we're just making sure the port's allowed first in the firewall. So, uh, okay, that's fine. Um, and then now, We'll go back, we'll paste this command, and we can run it. Um, one caveat to this, uh, and I will try to cover this in a, a little bit more depth. Um, this is going to store everything in ephemeral storage, meaning that uh, because we're not mapping a strict volume, we're not mapping a uh, folder or a directory uh, to this particular container for where the files get stored, um, if you delete the container itself, all the files that you upload here will be wiped out. So uh, do be careful running it this way. Um, but it is a really quick way to get up and running. So we can just run this command. Uh, and we can see here, uh, by default, like at this point, uh, min.io is running. We can open a new terminal, do sudo docker ps, uh, adding a password, and we can see min.io is indeed running so with the name min.io test um, if we were to uh, cancel out of this like if we stop this do an interrupt um, uh, and that's just here this control c so we exited at this point the container would be stopped so it's no longer there uh, but we can do ps a the container still exists so the storage is still there um, or the, the container is still there. And then also anything that we stored there would still be there. So we can just always start again. So 
So just sudo docker start minio test and then sudo docker ps. And we can see the, the minio is back. So let's let's just try to log in, make sure that we got this working right. Uh, we can go to localhost 9001. Here we are in the brand new MinIO uh, console. So in my previous video, I was using an older image of MinIO um, and they've like updated it drastically. It's a complete overhaul uh, and it's for a good thing. The, the interface is uh, way more intuitive, way more functionality. Um, and the other thing that they did is what we can see when we first ran this command here, we did this run dash IT. This IT means we sort of bring up a terminal um, or an interactive uh, interface. And it shows us uh, this information. If you did this run command without this IT uh, variable here, uh, you wouldn't be able to see like all of this information. Uh, previously, when MinIO had like the root user root password, um, they actually had access key and secret key. Um, and these keys were actually not like a defined default, um, but they were random. So like you miss that dash IT, then you really had no idea how to how to access the uh, the backend. Um, so do keep that in mind. Uh, because this is already set and all we did was stop and then restart the container, um, we can use these same defaults. So minio admin, minio admin are the defaults. Then here we are on the inside of minio. Um, so here we have uh, lots of different settings, lots of different things to uh, play with. Uh, honestly, I haven't done a whole lot like with the license support uh, monitoring things. Um, but what I have done is just do a very quick, uh, create a bucket so we can say bucket test. Um, uh, you can choose to enable versioning object locking quota. Right now we're just gonna create the bucket. From here, we can upload files. So if I just go to pictures, uh, let's see if we can upload multiple files. We can, cool. Okay, so we got that. All of these are now uploaded. Um, image, uh, not text files, but image. Uh, you can also do a preview, so you can actually see the file that we uploaded. Okay, and this is just, this is just a random picture. Um, uh, not my own or anything like that. Um, but we can go through and preview uh, some of these images. Uh, we can also then choose to share the images. So if we click share, uh, there is, uh, let's see if the maximum is still there. So invalid option. I think the maximum is seven. Uh, so you can share this for up to seven days if you click this link. So if I have that link and I put this in a separate browser, so no login credentials, uh, completely separate uh, interface. Oops. Let's copy, paste. And then I can see the picture of the chocolate. Okay. Um, now, but what if I wanted to share this file indefinitely? Okay. Well, to do that, you need to change this buckets uh, permission. So you can have with a private, see the access here is labeled private. Um, if you have the access as private, then you can create temporary links, uh, and this will be more secure. So it's recommended that you do it this way. Uh, however, if you did need a permanent link for something, uh, you could have, say, a bucket. Um, we'll go to buckets. We'll create another bucket. This will be our public bucket. Okay, and then we go to access, and then from here we can uh, let's see. We can manage it, and then the access policy we can actually set the public. Okay, so if it's set the public, then we have like more full um, accessibility uh, of the pub of the bucket itself. So once this is created and it's set to public, I can go browse. Okay, the access you can see is changed to public. And I can upload uh, another file again. So maybe we'll upload this surfer file. OK, 
Okay. Now once he's uploaded, again, uh, when we click on it, uh, we can actually click the share. But rather than copy all of this information, what we're going to do is just copy down to the file name. Okay, so we're going to copy down to here. And then we can test this again. So I believe this should work. Nope, didn't copy the whole thing. HTTP, okay. Um, and remember, if you are using this or planning to use this on like a public uh, internet, uh, please use HTTPS. Uh, but if I do this, I can see it. Uh, and theoretically, like if this was exposed on the World Wide Web or something like that, uh, anyone in the world would be able to see and uh, get access and you know copy the image or download this file. Okay. Uh, this at this point is already labeled as public. Um, the caveat in this case is that it's running on port 9000. So it's running off the, the access port or the API port. Um, and we can see that uh, here, so API, oh, sorry. Uh, we can see that here, API, it's running on port 9000. And then the console, how I'm accessing uh, MinIO is running on uh, port 9001. Okay, so... Uh, Honestly, there, there's a thousands of things that you can do uh, with MinIO. Um, the fact that it supports APIs is a big plus. And there's, um, it, but it makes it a really simple way to kind of get started with uh, self-hosting object storage. Uh, it's quite intuitive. Um, the fact that they have this web console makes it very easy to see and manage files. And then if, say, this was running on a secure but exposed publicly kind of connection. Um, it could be a very easy way to do like basic file sharing. Um, it's also fully compatible with uh, things like S3 command. So in Linux, there's this tool S3 command. There's also S3 web browsers, like any of the tools that you might be familiar with. Um, and I'll put some links to maybe some of those uh, third party tools uh, in the blog, just like to let people know about it, uh, but it is fully compatible with those. Um, I have tested that in the past. Uh, the other thing uh, to mention is that um, the project uh, TrueNAS, uh, in their uh, system, uh, they also have a very uh, easy way to get uh, S3 um, up and running. So if you went to uh, the TrueNAS documentation, you can also see under services, I believe uh, they have this S3 service. Uh, and the S3 service essentially is also a MinIO uh, runtime. So it has the MinIO browser and things. Um, and there's a tutorial here of how to get, get connected. Uh, and they also have some more information about how to get connected using uh, MinIO with, say, S3 command on Linux or S3 browser uh, in Windows. So there's some good reference information here. I'll link that in the blog. But this was just a very, very quick uh, video of just like some of the things of how to get started with MinIO. I hope it is uh, helpful to everyone. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments, like if you want to see anything more about MinIO or uh, its functionality or have any questions. So um, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, thank you very much.